All right, guys, in this video, we'll be looking at ellipsis. More specifically, we'll be looking at something called the major and the minor axis. Now, first of all, you'll notice that this ellipse, there's two different axes of symmetry here. We can cut this ellipse in half vertically. That would be one line of symmetry. But we could also cut this horizontally and cut the graph in half like this. This would also be a line of symmetry. So we have two lines of symmetry here. One is called the major, one is called the minor. The major would be the longer of the two. This one happens to be the major because it's the longer of the two axes of symmetry. And this shorter one here would be called the minor axis or the minor axis of symmetry. So what we're going to be doing in this uh, video here is finding both the major and the minor axis of each of our ellipses. Now again, we're going to have to keep in mind that we do have two of them. We've got a long one and a short one, the major and the minor axis. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start with is the major axis, or the longer of the two. So you'll notice in this case, this right here is the major axis of symmetry. And what we want to do is find the distance from one point to the other, from the top to the bottom. So we're going to count the distance here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the major axis is 10 units. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the minor axis, or the shorter of the two axes of symmetry. So this time we're going from this point to this point over here. So we're going to count the distance to get from one point to the other and that distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the minor axis is 6. Now I do want to point out not only do we have the graph that we can look at, but we can also use the equation to find the major and the minor axis. Now in order to find the major axis, you'll notice that we had a major axis of 10 units. We can also get that from the equation. If you notice here, if we look at B. Notice how the square root of 25 would be 5, which is our B. And if I were to take that 5, that's our vertical distance. That's the distance from the center up to the top here. And notice that this distance below it is the same exact distance. So this is B right here. This is another B. So if I were to multiply this 2, or this 5 times 2, notice that I end up with the same units of 10. Notice that we can do the same thing for the minor axis of symmetry. Notice in the equation, we have 9. The square root of 9 is 3. That is our horizontal distance. That's A. Notice that this distance over here would be exactly the same thing. So there's two A's. And since I just told you that A was 3, notice when I multiply 2 times 3, I get a value of 6, which is the same thing I have over here. So we can find the major and the minor axis both by looking at the graph and by looking at the equation. Alright, let's look at another example. Notice again I have an equation and the equation is x squared over 36 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. I've also got the graph of the ellipse that goes with that equation. And what we're going to be looking for is the major and the minor axis. So we're going to start with the major, the longer, the longer of the two axes of symmetry. Notice this time that major axis runs horizontally. It's this one right here. So what we want to do is what is the distance from this point to this point over here. So if we count that distance, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have a distance of 12 units, therefore our major axis is 12. Now we're going to find the minor axis, or the shorter of the two. Now we're looking at this distance here to get from one point to the other. We have to go a distance of four units. So we can look at the graph to come up with our major and minor axis. But we can also use the equation to come up with this major and minor axis. If I go back to that major axis, remember the horizontal distance, that's A, that's this distance here. This distance over here would be exactly the same. So there's two A's. And the distance of A, or the distance from the center to this point over here, is 6. 
So if I multiply 2 times 6, notice how it gives me the same value of 12. Now let's take a look at the minor axis. Now in order to find the minor axis using the equation, we're looking at the vertical distance, and this distance right here is b. This is also b. So to find that distance, we're going to do 2 times b. And b for us, if you look at that equation there, if I take the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So the value of b is 2. And if I multiply 2 times 2, I get a 4. So again, notice how it gives me the same value I came up with earlier by looking at the graph. So our major and minor axis are 12 and 4. Okay, our next example, I've got the equation x plus 4 squared over 1 plus y minus 1 squared over 16 equals 1. I've also got the graph of the ellipse that goes along with that equation. And what we're looking for is both the major and the minor axis. We'll start with the major. Remember, the major is the longer of the two axes, so we're looking at this distance to start off with. This is our major axis. We want to know what is that distance from this point at the top to this point down at the bottom. So if we count, we count a distance of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the major axis is 8 units. Now let's take a look at the minor axis. That's the shorter one. We can go from this point to this point over here. So we want to know what is that distance. And if we count the units, we're going 1, 2, 2 units. Therefore, the minor axis is 2 units. Now remember, we can also find this using the equation. If I go back to my major axis, remember that vertical distance, we're calling this b. This distance down here is also b. So notice that we have two b's. So if I wanted to find the major axis using the equation, all I've got to do is come over here and find b. The square root of 16 is 4. So if I multiply 2 times 4, I end up with 8, which is the same thing I found by looking at the graph. So all we're saying is this is 4, this is 4, and 4 plus 4, or 4 times 2 is 8. We can do the same thing with the minor axis. If we're calling this A and this A, we have two a's or two times a and if we look at our equation over here the square root of one is one which means a is one and if I multiply two times one I get a two which is the same thing I found by looking at the graph so again what we're saying is this unit is one this is one and one plus one or one times two is two so again we can find the major and minor axis by the equation and we can also use the graph to find the major and minor. Okay, let's look at another example. I've got the equation and the graph that goes along with that equation of an ellipse. We're going to start by finding the major axis, the longer of the two axes of symmetry. So I'm looking at this one right here. Notice we're trying to find the distance from this point to this point over here. So if we count it, we're counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 units. So the major axis is 10 units. Now let's find the minor axis. That's this distance right here. So I want to know how far is it from top to bottom. So if I count the units, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're looking at a minor axis of 6 units. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, guys, notice how the major and minor axis both go through the center. And that will always be the case. They'll always go through the center there. Now, let's not forget that we can also find this major and minor axis using the equation. If you recall that this horizontal distance, or the distance from the center to this point over here, is what we call A. This distance over here is also called A. So both of those distances together is 2 times a. And if I come over here and look at the equation, we can find a by taking the square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So if I multiply 2 times 5, I get a 
10, which is the same thing I got here looking at the graph. We can do the same thing with the minor axis. Remember the minor axis is the shorter. If I look at the graph, vertical distance is what we're calling B. So this distance from the center to this point up here is called B. The distance from the center down to the bottom point is also a B. So there's two Bs. So the total distance is 2B. So if I wanted to find B, I can come to the equation. Take the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And if I multiply 2 times 3, I get a 6, which is the same thing I found by looking at the graph. So remember, we can find the major and minor axis by both looking at the graph and by looking at the equation. All right, let's take a look at an example where we don't have a graph to look at. All we have is the equation. So I've got the equation x minus 3 squared over 36 plus y minus 2 squared over 4 equals to 1. And again, we're going to be looking for the major and the minor axis. Now recall when we're working with ellipses, there's basically two types of ellipses that we can end up with. We have a horizontal ellipse, and we also have a vertical ellipse. So the question is, what type of ellipse are we going to come up with from this equation? Well, if you look at your bottom numbers, your A and your B here, notice how A, 36, or actually that's A squared, and B squared is 4. Notice the larger number is the horizontal distance. The smaller number, 4, is the vertical distance. So we're going to end up with an ellipse that looks like this right here. And that's important for us in determining the major and the minor axis. All right, so now that I know which type of ellipse I'm going to end up with, now let's find the major and the minor axis. Now, since I'm going to end up with a horizontal ellipse, we're looking for the major axis, and that's this one right here. So we're going to be looking at the value of A, the horizontal distance. We know that distance is A. We know that distance is A. So in order to find the major axis, we're going to have to multiply 2 times A. So if I go to the equation, I need to know what A is. So I'm going to take the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. So if I multiply 2 times 6, I end up with 12. So my major axis is 12 units. So to get from one point to the opposite point, we're looking at a distance of 12 units. Now let's use that same approach to find the minor axis. This time I'm looking for this distance right here. Now we're looking at vertical distance. This is B. This is B. So in order to find the minor axis, we're going to have to multiply 2 times B. So to find B, I'm going to come over here to my equation. I'm going to take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And if I multiply 2 times 2, I end up with 4. So my minor axis is 4 units. So to get from one point up here to this point down here, we're looking at a distance of 4 units. Okay, next equation we're working with is x plus 3 squared over 4 plus y minus 4 squared over 36 equals 1. What we're going to do first is determine which type of ellipse we end up with, whether it's a horizontal or vertical ellipse. You'll notice that this number is larger than this number here, which means that we're going to end up with a vertical ellipse. We're going to end up with something that looks like this. And that's because our vertical distance is going to be more than our horizontal distance. All right, so now that we have a general idea of what the graph is going to look like, let's come over here and find the major axis. So the major axis, that's going to be this longer one right here. I'm trying to look for the distance from this point to this point down here. Now remember, this is our center, and we're looking at vertical distance. This distance right here is B. This distance is also B. So in order to find my major axis, we're going to need to multiply 2 times B. So I'm going to go to my equation and find out what B is. To find B, I'm going to have to take the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. And if I multiply 2 times 6, I get a value of 12, which means that my major axis is 12 units. To get from one point up at the top to this point down at the bottom, it's 12 units. 
Now let's find the minor axis. Now we're looking for this distance right here. And we're going to use the equation to find that distance. Now recall we're looking at horizontal distance. So this is A. This distance is also A. So we're looking at a total of 2A, 2 times A. So I'm going to go to my equation and find out what A is. To find out what A is, I'm looking right here. I'm going to take the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. And if I multiply 2 times 2, I get a value of 4. So in other words, the distance from this point to this point over here is a total distance of 4 units.